Welcome. So my name sounds Italian, right? My uh, grand, grand, grand family is coming from Ischia, Napoli Bay, but I don't speak uh, a word. Ciao, al tutti. Okay, that's all. <laughs> Grazie. So I'm going to speak today about uh, advanced search for your legacy application. Uh, my name is David Pilato, and I am uh, working at Elastic. I'm mainly working uh, on Elasticsearch project. Don't be surprised by the position here. I'm just um, making a lot of commits because I'm maintaining plugins in Elasticsearch, so I'm not doing crazy stuff uh, at Elastic. But still, I'm a committer on this project. And uh, also, I'm Dadune on Twitter. And please, if you can tweet today using also Elasticsearch and no slides, because my income is based on the number of tweets I have, so <laughs> that would be lovely. Thank you. At Elastic, we are uh, providing uh, multiple uh, product, open source products, and some um, uh, advanced feature for companies, so commercial products. Uh, you have some stickers here if you want to take them uh, after all, after. Uh, and we are also providing Elastic as a service on the cloud. So you can go to this uh, URL, cloud.elastic.co, and create your cluster, and we will manage uh, everything for you. OK. So after the commercial part, let's do some coding. <laughs> right. I don't have slides, right? This is web, web pages. OK. So uh, the use case I, I want to talk about today uh, is about, uh, I have an application which is uh, running here locally on my laptop. I'm collecting some data around marketing people. So I have uh, information like the name of the, the person, the birth date, number of uh, children, uh, the gender, uh, the address, country, city, that kind of information. Right, and I have already an application running. So I'm going to take that here, okay. So my application is running here uh, locally. Where is it? It's here. Yeah. And if I look at my application for now, I'm going to close all that. I don't need it anymore. Blah, blah, blah. So uh, my uh, application is providing some features, like I want to search for people in my database. Um, so if I'm searching for Joe here, I don't have anything because I did not inject anything yet, right? So in my application, I have also uh, Injector, which is able to create dynamically some, uh, uh, in, some data in my database. So I'm using a MySQL database here. If I look at what I have here, the database. So my, my database is here. If I look here at the visualization, so I'm going to show you two things. Oops. My domain. Where is it? It's here. Diagrams, show diagrams. OK, so let's make that bigger. <coughs> I want to see fields and links. OK, and what if I click here? OK, so I have a main entity. This is the person. In this person, I have the name field, the date of birth, the gender, number of children, and the link to a marketing table, which are counters, how many, my, how many times my user clicked on the music button in my uh, mobile application, for example. And also an uh, address. So the address is like this. I have the country, the city, and geolocation point, like this. Right. So the database is really similar to this. Here. So I have a table for person, a table for the address, including the latitude and longitude points and a marketing table. So this is a really simple use case here. So let's inject some data, because I guess I don't have any data yet. Where is the database here? If I go to the console, if I select equal from person, I don't have anything yet. So with my uh, injector, I'm going to inject, create randomly persons, which are going to be injected in the database. So let's inject 10,000 people, for example. OK, so the people are coming. I guess that if I go to IntelliJ again, and I run the query, OK, I can see that some people are generated here in the database. 
And now I can use my uh, search application. So here I want to search for people named Joe. Okay, it's working. Joe Smith. Okay, where in France. Okay, I can search for the country and for the city. Okay. I have also an advanced search feature where I can search explicitly for uh, in with, uh, within fields. So you know, if I want to search for Joe living in France, living in Paris, okay, I have it. Okay. Those are the, uh, the features I have for now. Um, let's have a look at the code. So how everything is coded now? Um, if I look at my First, my person service. So anytime I'm inserting, um, I'm generating the data, I'm using the save method and I'm using your Ibernet to uh, generate the SQL uh, request to the database. So I'm be, uh, starting a transaction, I'm saving my entity into a, uh, um, the database and then I'm committing the transaction. So this is what I'm doing. About the search itself, if we look at the search, so I'm coming from the interface with a query. My user is searching for something. And here I'm using this method, find like Google. Okay. So I'm uh, receiving from the interface the query. I'm generating a query again using Ibernet. I have pagination here. And, how do, and then I, I'm generating the list of uh, people. How do I generate the query? I'm using here a like person strategy. Uh, so I'm searching uh, within the name field. But I have also a join with the address table because I want to search for the country in the address table and for the city in the address table. Okay, I'm using a like query here. If I look at the advanced search, it's super similar. So from the interface, I'm getting the name, the country, the city. And if I have something in the name, then it much he must sorry, match on the name field with a like person strategy again. Same for country and same for city. This is basically what we have. Do we have a problem here? No, it works, works well. Let's do some over tests. So Joe Smith is working well, okay. Let's try something else. Let's try Smith, Joe. Oh, this guy exists, right? But I can't find this guy because the query does not match, right? So maybe we can change the query and try to split the text and try to combine all that, but okay, not ideal. And what happens if I'm searching for G smooth? Oh, yeah, it does not work as well. Yeah, it's not the exact text. Still, uh, you, 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 uh, uppercase and lowercase is working, okay. But it's not ideal. So. Maybe this is something we can fix with a search engine. And a search engine is designed for that. And also, maybe you did not notice yet, because we have only 10,000 documents, we have really a small uh, data set here. And you are running a like percent uh, query on a really big data set, like millions of documents, for example, that's, this is not going to work, because you are going to do full scan table. And that will be an issue, probably. So the goal of this talk is to show you how you can use a, a search engine. Obviously, I'm using Elasticsearch as a search engine. I'm biased. Yeah. Uh, and so this is the purpose of the talk now. So let's add uh, Elasticsearch to our project. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add an Elasticsearch client. So I'm doing a Java code here. I hope that you are aware of Java. At least you will understand uh, what I'm doing. It's you can do basically the same thing on, on whatever language you want, because Elasticsearch is a REST um, JSON uh, search engine, so you can use from whatever technology you want, but here I'm using uh, Java. So I'm adding my uh, library for um, Elasticsearch. The first thing I need to do is in the save method here, when I'm saving a document in the database, I want to save also this document in Elasticsearch. I could have used another uh, design pattern. I could have used an ETL, 
which is for trying to run every five minutes, for example, and try to find information and run a query on the database, try to get the new documents which are, have been added, and then transform them into JSON documents and send them to Elasticsearch. But it's not real time, right? When my user click on the Save button, I want him to be able to search in Elasticsearch uh, immediately. So instead of using an ETL here, I prefer using um, uh, directly in inserting the data in, uh, in the database and in Elasticsearch at the same time. So I'm going to create a data access object Elastic for Elasticsearch, a save method, and I'm going to save the person here. So let's create this field. It will be final Elasticsearch DAO. I need to create this class. Okay. Why not? Uh, I'm using your uh, framework uh, called Restix. So Restix is helping me to to do uh, the the rest part of my application because my application is not using is not that legacy. I'm not using GSP or Struts or that kind of stuff. I'm focusing on the backend today, so that's the reason. So because I'm using Restix, I can annotate it as a component. Then it will be automatically injected here. So I can get it from here. Um, this Elasticsearch DAO equal Elasticsearch DAO. OK. So I have my component, and I need to implement this method. OK. So what I need to do to communicate with Elasticsearch? First, I need a client. So let's build a client. Private final client ES uh, client, for example. I'm going to build it. Here. <coughs> so how can I create my client? I'm going to use um, a, a pre-built, uh, what we call transport client. So pre-built transport client class. I have no settings. Empty. OK. And I need to tell this client uh, where Elasticsearch is running. By default, Elasticsearch will run what is not well, oh new I forgot the new. <laughs> By default, Elasticsearch um, is running on uh, local host on port uh, 9300. So I'm going to add this port. It's a bit verbose here, but I think we are going to simplify all that. And new in its socket address. So the machine dot one and the port. OK, I have a client. Uh, Elasticsearch picks JSON. So I need to provide JSON documents to Elasticsearch, to the client. To do that, I'm going to use a, a library we have in uh, Java. The name is uh, Jackson. And as Restix already has this um, component, I'm just going to import it here. So let's inject that here. I need this <coughs> and this. This dot maple equal maple. OK. Now I can start to implement really my, my save method. So first thing I need to do, I need to serialize my bin as a JSON document. Right. I'm not going to create one document per physical table we have. I'm just, I just want to search for person here. So I'm going to build a document named person with all the properties I need. I don't need to split that on multiple tables. So let's do that. Let's use the mapper. I'm going to write my document as, I can write either as bytes or strings. Bytes is OK, more efficient probably. I can have an exception. Uh, OK. <coughs> so here I have 
uh, array of bytes, which is representing my person uh, data as a JSON document. Next step is to send this to Elasticsearch. So I want to create an index operation. Let me pass an index request. I need to, 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 to tell Elasticsearch in which index you want to index your document. So the index name is person, the type is person, and what is the ID of the document? I'm going to use person.id as string, which is okay. And then I need to provide the JSON document itself. So here are my bytes array. And I need to execute that and get back the result. So basically with two lines here and all the stuff around, uh, I'm able to serialize a JSON and send a document to Elasticsearch. I didn't mention, but when you are using an ETL strategy, then you have to be aware of what you have to do when you want to remove a document in the database. What you have to do? Uh, if you are using an ETL, it means that you are running a SQL query and you need to be aware that something which is not coming back as a result needs to be removed in Elasticsearch. That's super tricky to implement, right? Uh, so you can use a technical table, but it's not really ideal. And Oh, I forgot something. I forgot to fix. I have an exception here. Maybe I can have an exception when I'm communicating with Elasticsearch. So what can I do with that? You're just going to serve one with try catch. Um, I can have a strategy saying, OK, I can, for example, roll back my transaction. This is not really the code I, I would wrote, but this is similar to this, right? But here, I don't want to do that. It's super important for my use case that when my user click on the save button, the data is saved in the database. Whatever is happening with Elasticsearch, if I'm not able to index, okay, that's not important. At least I will have saved my, my document. So here, I'm just going to log to the ops guy that we have a problem. Yeah. And I'm nice with them, so I'm going to give them the exception as well. OK. Uh, coming back to the delete operation. So it's really easier uh, because uh, to, to, to do that, to also remove documents into Elasticsearch within the same tra transaction as you remove that into the database. So I just want to show you how you can do that with Elasticsearch. I'm going to implement a method, delete again, and I want to remove a person by its ID. Let's create this method, ID. And the operation in Elasticsearch is super uh, straightforward. You want to create a delete request, new delete request. What is the index name? Person, the type, person, and the ID. Then execute and get back the result. So it can send also exceptions. Why not? It means that here I need to catch it as well. OK, whatever, right? <coughs> so let's have a look uh, if everything is working. First of all, I need, obviously, to start Elasticsearch. So here I'm using the latest version of Elasticsearch. So it's basically a standard um, installation. I just need to provide a GVM and then run Elasticsearch. That's all. No really configuration. Yeah. So it's starting on the transport port, which is used by Java and on the REST port as well. So I can run REST requests uh, against my cluster if I want. I'm going to run some REST requests, but I'm going to use Kibana for that. So same here, running Kibana. So Kibana is going to provide me an interface, and that will be easier to run REST requests uh, against Elasticsearch. So let's open Kibana somewhere. It's here. And the interesting part is here. So Elasticsearch is running. You can see that here. But for now, if I look, I don't have any 
indices name person. Yeah, I just have an internal index name dot Kibana, but that, that's all. So Elas uh, Elasticsearch is running. I need to restart my application now. Where is the button? Here. Is it restarting? Yes. Okay, it's done. So uh, let's go back to our application and let's initialize some data again. Let's inject data. Hmm. It's working, but it's really slower, right? Uh, let's have a look at what we have in Kibana now. Okay, I can see that I have my index person. And if I'm running a query against Elasticsearch, person underscore search, give me all the documents, for example, here. So I have indexed so far that number of documents, and those are the first 10 documents I have. Right? So random data. So it's uh, the same version as the document we had in the database, but as JSON document now. OK. Still. Uh, our application is still using here the database for searching. We didn't modify the search part. So let's do that. Yeah, I did that already. Let's do that. In the code, in my person service method, I'm going to replace all that code. And I'm going to use my, uh, I'm going to create a query. Query builder here. Yeah. Query. If I have nothing uh, entered by, by the user, then I want to run a query, which is a match all query. This means give me everything. Right? I don't have any criteria. Otherwise, I want you to run another kind of query. And here I'm going to use uh, a multi-match query. So the parameter I have to pass is what is the user is searching for, Q. And what are the fields I want to search in. So I want to search in the name field. I can add gender if I want. Everything is indexed by Elasticsearch by default. Address dot uh, country. Oops. And then address dot city. OK, I have my query now. Let's call our DAO, implement a new method named search. I'm going to pass the query I just built. And I want to show you the pagination, so I'm going to pass also the form and size parameter. We implement that. OK. What I need to do with the client, I'm going to use a prepare search method here. I want to search in an index name person. I can narrow down to a specific type if I want. So types person. What is the query? The one we built before. From and size parameter is super obvious. <coughs> size. Size. Then I want you to execute that and get back the result. OK. I have a response. Let's return the response. So now I have a response from Elasticsearch. Let's take this response. Uh, as I said, I have uh, already a JSON uh, interface, so I'm just going to send back the response as a, as a JSON document. I'm cheating a bit here, but that's fine. OK, so done for that. Uh, let's have a look at the advanced search now. 
right? This is the same thing we have to do. I'm going to type a lot of code, very fast. Demo. Oops. Yeah, I'm fast, I know. <laughs> so, same again. We are getting from the interface three fields, name, country, and city. If the user did not enter anything in name and country and city, then we are also running the match all query we have seen before. Otherwise, we are going to create a Boolean query. And if, you, if the user enters anything in the name field, then the, the document must match on the name field. And if the user entered anything in country, it must match on address.country, and same for address.city. Then, so this is our query, and then we are using the same DAO here, and we are calling also query from size, and, and that's all. Let's restart that. Okay, so now I'm using Elasticsearch to search. Hmm, does not work. It was working better previously. But if I'm typing for the for the name uh, for Joe uh, totally for the full term, then it works. We need to look at, uh, about this. Oh, Smith, I said. Have a look here. We have R1 Joe at the first place. But now if I'm typing Joe Smith. Joe Smith is coming at the first place. Why this? Because it's more relevant. And this is the purpose of a search engine. We want to provide to the user the most relevant uh, documents first, right? Uh, what about Smith Joe? Okay, we have something. What about the advanced search? Okay, it's not working ideally. But if I have the full term, it's working. France, Paris. <coughs> More or less, we have something. Uh, I want to look at this. Okay, so the numbers of documents we have injected per second was super, super slow. Right? If you remember wh when we were injecting in the database, it was around 200 or 300 documents per second. And now we are only, yes. 33 documents per second, so that's super low. You can uh, increase that. Uh, instead of uh, sending a single index operation uh, to Elasticsearch, you can use what we call the bulk, the bulk request. So basically, you are building uh, a set of bulk requests, and then you are sending all those requests at once to Elasticsearch. And it's really much more efficient. Uh, let's do it here in the DAO. So for that, we have uh, what we call a uh, bulk processor uh, in Java. It's this. So I'm going to explain what is this. I create the field, bulk processor. I also need a logger here. Okay. So this class uh, is uh, taking a client. And in the bulk processor, I'm going to add request, index request or delete request, whatever. Every 10,000 requests, I want to flush the bulk to Elasticsearch. Or every five seconds, whatever the number of requests I have in the bulk, then I'm going to flush that to Elasticsearch. Right? And I can provide a listener to see whatever is happening. So this listener is, will be called before the bulk operation is sent to Elasticsearch, after the operation is sent to Elasticsearch when successful, or after a big failure. Okay. Mm. Not enough. Here I need to use my bulk processor, and I need to add the index request here, instead of sending the operation directly to Elasticsearch. Same for delete, bug processor. Let's add the request. Okay. And yeah, that's all. Um, we have seen that when I'm searching for G, G O, G O E, 
So G, G O does not work, but G O E is working. Why is this? It's the way of Elasticsearch is working by default. Elasticsearch by default, if you don't provide uh, any uh, what we call mapping, so it's like a schema of your database, uh, is Elasticsearch is going to apply a default behavior. It means here that, for example, for the city field, it's going to say, oh, I, I saw that it's a string, and I'm going to index it as a full text thing, so I want to be able to perform full text. And the default strategy Elasticsearch is using when you are running uh, full text is that it's using what we call a standard analyzer by default. And if you look at what the standard analyzer is doing with this API, you can see that at index time, Elasticsearch from this Joe Smith uh, text, it will generate two tokens, Joe and Smith. And when you search, Elasticsearch is going to compare, for example, if I'm typing for Joe Smith, at search time, Elasticsearch will generate also the same token and will compare exactly the same token that has been generated at search time and what is in the inverted index. So that's the reason Joe is matching when I'm searching for Joe, but G is not matching because I don't have G here. I can change that using what we call a n-gram strategy, for example. So I'm going to show you that. So I can provide, uh, when I'm creating an index, an analyzer. And in this analyzer, I'm saying, OK, I want to use here, so my analyzer, the name of my analyzer is n-gram. I'm going to use a specific tokenizer. And this tokenizer is defined here, the n-gram tokenizer. And I'm using what we call a edge n-gram strategy. It means that for every single token, instead of generating Joe, we are going to generate G, G-O, G-O-E. So let's try this. If I apply again my um, analyze process, but now using the n-gram analyzer I define, you can see that what is going to be indexed in the inverted index is G, G-O, G-O-E, S, etc. Right? You can use a wildcard query in Elasticsearch, but please don't do that. It's really not efficient. It's really better to generate more tokens. It will cost you more time at index time and more disk space, of course, but it will be really much more efficient if you do that. Um, but if we search for someone, let's say, with, uh, I don't know, G, Jill like this. At search time, if we are using the same analyzer, the n-gram one, then this is going to produce G, G, E, G, E, L. And G is also going to match with the Joe, because Joe has generated a single G character. Right? And we don't want to do that. So at search time, we will apply a different strategy, and we will use the simple strategy, an analyzer, and Joe will be basically um, parsed as simple GO, so GE won't, won't match anymore. Okay? So we need to provide all that to uh, our uh, Elasticsearch cluster. To do that, I'm going to use a library I, I wrote. The name is uh, Beyonder, it's open source. Instead of uh, calling Elasticsearch uh, myself, I'm just going to create in the class pass some uh, files. By convention, uh, Beyonder is looking in uh, Elasticsearch uh, directory in the class pass. And if you have something which is the index name, person, and then if you have a file name underscore settings.json, then it's index settings. Let's create our analyzer here. This is the one I have shown before. Right. And if you have a file name, the type, the JSON, then this one will also be used by Beyonder, and it will apply the mapping I generated here. I type very fast again. <laughs> 
So what I'm doing here, I'm disabling the underscore all field. This is something you should do in production. It's like uh, copying all the data I have within my JSON documents and indexing everything in the underscore all document, in underscore all fields. That's not really useful. I prefer using another strategy. I'm going to show you that. So what I define here, what is the difference between what we had before and this? Uh, if I look at the city field, I'm still using the default strategy by default. So if I'm searching in the city field, I will search again for the full term. But at index time, I'm generating other subfields. So if I'm searching for city.autocomplete uh, in city.autocomplete, then I'm, it will be still a text type of a field. But I'm, I will use my ngram strategy, and at search time, I will use my simple strategy what I shown you before. Um, later, I want to compute some aggregations. So here, I will also generate a subfield named city.ags, which is a keyword type of field. And I will be able to build aggregation on top of that. I'm doing the same thing for country and for name and for gender. I'm also doing another thing. I'm copying everything from the name field to uh, generated time, at index time, a generated full text field. And this field is defined here. So it will be generated at index time. And again, I'm using the same uh, index and search strategy. OK. Uh, I need to call Beyonder. So in my Elasticsearch VAO here, I need to do Elasticsearch Beyonder start with a client. I catch. Small typo, yeah. OK. Um, I need to remove uh, my index first, because Beyonder is not going to replace anything if you have already some data in place. So let's remove the index. Not here again. And then I can restart my application. OK. We should see in the logs that uh, Beyonder is working. Blah, blah, blah. OK, Elasticsearch, rock and roll. Let's uh, have a look again at our application. Uh, uh, oh, I removed some documents in the database, right? So I need to re-index my documents. Let's have a look if uh, now with the bulk we are faster. Yeah, a bit faster. Not super fast, but OK. While this is injecting, we are still going to use here a search. So I'm still searching by default in the name field. So I still have the same behavior. And let's fix that. Where is it? It's here. In the person service here, Instead of searching inside name, gender, address, country, address, city, we can say, I want to search in the full text field I generated dy dynamically. And I can do something more. I can say, OK, search also in the match field. And if you find what you are looking for, you can boost the result. It means that if it match on the name field, then the the, name, the the document should be on the top of the list. Right. So let's compile that. I have six minutes, actually. <laughs> so it's done. Yeah, it's done. If I'm searching for Joe, OK, so it's working now. OK, G-O, G-O-E. OK, the exact term is here. If I'm searching for France, so France is the name of the country. And I don't have any friends? OK. I, I was supposed to have a friend. OK, sorry. Um, let's have a look at the advanced search. Same, we didn't fix the issue. So instead of searching in name, I'm going to search in, in name.autocomplete, country, city, autocomplete. Compile. G working. 
France, Paris. Okay, so we have the same behavior as we have seen before, but now it's using a search engine. Um, let's do some something more. We have seen that the injection rate is not so high. So let's make just a test to see how well this is performing, actually. Uh, so let's remove the access to the database and just inject data into Elasticsearch. Remove person. This is a person. I need just to modify something here because I don't have any ID anymore. So I'm just going to say to Elasticsearch generate automatically the ID for us. It's not coming back from the database. So if I'm injecting 10,000 documents again, look, done. Okay? So it's super fast. So I can generate now 1 million documents, for example. And this is the, the indexation rate we have with Elasticsearch here locally on my laptop without any optimization. And this is a search engine. So we can search while everything is indexing. We can see the number of documents increasing so far. Okay? So it's working very well. We can do more. We can try to build some aggregation on top of that. And because I'm running on, uh, out of time, I'm going to be super fast. I'm going to do that directly. So here I'm building, no, sorry. Let's do this one first. So I'm building a first aggregation. I want to count my result and group by them by country. So I want to have the top 10 of my documents broken by country. Sorry, the top 10 countries I have for my data, my result set. And I want to break uh, my result set by year as well. I want to have the distribution of the people broken by year. So let's compile that. Yeah. If I look at what I have as a result, so my injection is over. But now I can see the effect, right? I can see that I have that number of people in France, that number of people living in the uh, 16. If I search for Joe, OK, I can have that result live on live data. And I can do more. I can say I'm going to replace this one with um, another kind of aggregation. So I'm breaking by country. Then for each bucket, per country, I want to have the distribution per year. And then for each year, I want to compute the average number of children. Right. And I need to do some HTML. Here, where is that? Here. I'm almost done, so I can make it. Two minutes. Cool. A lot of time. Let's compile that. OK. Let's refresh this page. So now I have this compute button. So I can see the effect. Right. So I have my distribution of people broken per country, then per around 10 years, and then the number of children for this bucket average. And same, Joe. OK, I have all that. In real time, it's living. OK, let's finish by something else. G smooth is not working. OK, I can fix that. Just. Simple thing here in the search method. We can say here with our multi match query, just add a fuzziness uh, parameter. I want to allow a distance of one. And I can apply also this fuzziness parameter to this one, this one, and this one. Okay. So if I'm searching for GSmooth, OK, now I have my result back, because GSmooth is similar to Joe Smith. And same for the advanced here. G, Boris, ah, not Boris, why? Oh, it's the country, France, Boris, Boris, OK, so I try. I'm finding some results. <laughs> Maybe it's not super relevant, but that's OK. Uh, OK, I'm running out of time. So just a few last words. Uh, once you have uh, created uh, all your stuff, 
you can use Kibana to display all that information for free. I mean, here, for example, I have the representation of the document I have injected so far, broken by year, gender, blah, blah, blah. And I can search within all those documents, if I'm searching in the name field, obviously. So this is the distribution of my Joe, blah, 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 blah. Exactly. And finally, you can find uh, all what I have shown you here in my uh, GitHub repo. So on dadune slash legacy search. So this is the demo I played today. You just have to switch from one branch to another and follow all the steps. And then you can replay all that at home if you wish. So this is the repo name. And I'm done. One minute late. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I have a lot of uh, stickers, so if you want to take them, I don't want to bring that back home. So, and I have some time for questions. In the meantime, if you want to come on stage and uh, set up yourself, you want to set up already? Uh, yeah. ten for, for ten minutes for questions. Okay. So questions. Grazie mille. Yes. Hi, thank you for presentation. Uh, one question about uh, if we cannot modify our software. We have, for example, legacy software we cannot modify to insert data to Elasticsearch. I know that we can do some uh, jobs, uh, it, for example, some ETL yes. to extract data from one mm -hmm. source and uh, inject mm -hmm. uh, to Elasticsearch. Mm -hmm. Can you suggest uh, some uh, some tools uh, that uh, do this uh, okay. kind of jobs? Yeah, Thank you. so that's a good question. Uh, indeed, uh, so I prefer if you can modify the application, that's better to me. But if you can't, you can use a ETL like uh, Logstash, for example. Logstash is the one of we are uh, publishing at Elastic. So it's an ETL. But I would say it's only for a basic purpose. Like if you have a collection of collection of collection of attributes, then running a single query to try to generate a JSON document for that, it's super hard. So if Logstash does not fit your needs in that case, maybe you can use Talend or Mule ESB, for example. Those are really good tools as well. So maybe th that's the way to do it. I missed the picture. I was like this, waiting for you. <laughs> It was either super clear or either really unclear. <laughs> so thank you guys. Have a nice thank you. day. Thank you.